Okay, and again, you've probably played a power chord before, but let me show you this. A power chord is a chord that moves across the guitar. Like this, right? Usually we're playing something on the sixth string and something on the fifth string and something on the fourth string. This would be called a third fret power chord or a G power chord because this note right here is G. And if you don't know those things, that's certainly something I would recommend you studying as well, is learning the notes on your guitar, things like that as well. So there's our power chord. Now you'll notice I'm only strumming two or three strings here, which is making that sound very uniform. It's bringing everything together. Instead of strumming all six strings, I'm just playing a couple of strings. Now when you play power chords, Oftentimes you can play with three different notes like this, or you can even just play with two notes and leave the, the pinky note, the fourth string note off entirely. Now you might notice a subtle difference between when I use the fourth string and when I don't use it. But if it was on an album or a, a CD or something like that and you were listening to it, or somebody was on stage, you wouldn't go, oh, they're not playing the fourth string. You see, that's a real world thing again. It's from a logical perspective, you could play two strings or three strings and it wouldn't make any difference. From the real world perspective, it's the same answer. Okay. So even if you were learning how to play whatever song by whatever artist and it shows you playing three strings, the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings, and you prefer to play just the sixth and the fifth strings, I wouldn't lose any sleep over that at all. Okay. Now, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is when you play three strings, you're playing this note here, which is G. The pinky is also G. You're playing an octave of the same note. That's why this note here isn't really necessary because you're already playing the lower octave right there, right? So if I play something like, um, let's say I do a, a, a Ramones tune and I go. And then I take the pinky off and I play. It's whatever feels best to me. It doesn't matter to me whether the original used whatever. I just want what, what works best for me so when I play it, it feels comfortable. Okay? Which brings me to another point of power chords, open chords, whatever chords you like to play. When I play these power chords, sometimes I will play a power chord with my first finger and my pinky instead of my first and my third, which is the logical way of playing. Sometimes I'll play my first and my pinky. You don't have to repeat what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing. But, but the point is, I don't, it, it, I don't lose sleep over that either, okay? When I'm playing, sometimes I use my third finger, sometimes I use my pinky. Sometimes I use both in a, you know, a three-string power chord. But these are those real-world things I want you to be thinking about. Now, you might decide in your head that it makes logical sense to just use one style all the time. And that's okay, okay? Or you just shift with whatever came before you and whatever's coming after you, this is where you wound up and it feels good to you. And that's okay too. Okay. So much of learning how to play real music, which is most certainly rock and roll, is learning your approach to how you're going to do something, not just because a video said to do a certain thing or, you know, theory says that it's done a certain way. I'm not saying that those things aren't bad and I'm not saying those things aren't right. What I'm saying is they might be bad or wrong for you, okay? And again, in my world of, of doing what I do, making music and performing and doing this, I don't stress over those kinds of things. My job is to go out, like when I perform, my job is to go out and entertain. I should play to the best of my ability with the band that I'm playing in and allow the people that are coming to see me play have fun. That's what my job is. Whether every note is exactly the way it's supposed to be or every fingering is exactly the way the original artist did it, I don't even, I don't even bother with that stuff. I, I'm concerned about me. Who am I as a player? And what's my approach to playing those? And if you ever wonder that, take a look at something like Ozzy Osbourne with Randy Rhodes. And then look at, or even further, go back to Black Sabbath with Tony Iommi with Ozzy. And then look at Randy's approach to playing Black Sabbath songs. 
Look at Zach Wilde's approach to playing Black Sabbath songs. Look at Gus G's approach to playing Black Sabbath songs. All these different players, uh, you know, um, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could look at anybody, but Jakey Lee, for instance, how he, his approach to playing them, they're all different. It's not like Zach Wilde gets up and goes, oh, bummer, I didn't play that exactly the way Tony Iommi played it. Shame on me. It, no, he's just doing his thing, right? So even those guys do it. It's us that we in our bedrooms that get caught up in this whole thing. We're in the real world. There's so many other th factors involved. That it isn't just whether or not you're playing it with the right fingers or you're playing it in the right spot or you're playing two strings instead of three strings. I don't want you to stress over those kind of things, which is why we're looking at all of these different rock rhythms coming up very soon.